and I'm trying to encourage you to try to work towards a better grade. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. Today what I want to discuss is that how grading works. But before I go into how grading works for a university course, what I want to tell you is that why you need to understand how the grading works. So the thing is that most of the students, they go into the university learning and they have no idea how the grading thing works. And even if they have a little idea or, you know, a general idea about how the grading is working, they are missing out on small detail which cost you a lot of good grade at the end of the course. So what you need to understand and why you need to understand grading is that the grading system is going to make or break your career in terms of future study or in terms of uh, presenting your CV. I'm assuming here that you know what grade point average is. Here we have a uh, CGP of 4 and GP of 4 for every course. So the students, they are graded uh, somewhere between 0 and 4 out of these GPA grade points. So th they are being graded based on different grade names like A+, plus, then there's A, then there's A-, minus, and then there's like B+, plus, and so on. So I'm going to show you the grading legend in a while. But for every single course that you go to uh, study in the university, what you get something called the course outline. So in the course outline, you get something called a grading scheme. So I'm going to show you a grading scheme of one of my courses. We will have these different types of instruments and every instrument is going to have this much weightage for the absolute grade. So assuming that the absolute total of all of this is 100, so the 25% of that 100 goes to midterm exam, which will be of essay type, for example, the instructor has mentioned. And then there is going to be a final exam, which will be 30% of the total 100. Then there are going to be some assignments. So the instructor may choose to mention what kinds of assignments they will be. And then the instructor mentions the total percentage of the assignments for all of the assignments. So this 15% is for all the assignments. Similarly, there will be quizzes. The weightage for the quizzes is shown. The quizzes are mostly taken in person. They are small uh, 10 minutes to 20 minutes or sometimes even 30 minutes exams. And then there could be other parts or modes of the course like labs, which are the practical part. And the weightage is mentioned. And sometimes some instructors, they choose to include your attendance or your class participation, uh, some weightage just to motivate you to attend the classes. So this is called the grading scheme. So once you have the grading scheme, you simply can perceive this grading scheme as, okay, so I'm going to see that uh, the final exam has a lot of weightage and the uh, midterm exam has a lot of part to play in your total grade. So I just need to focus on these two things and I can just be really relaxed on the assignments or the quizzes or the labs or even the attendance because they're having less part to play in your overall 100% of the grade. So the thing to notice, and I'm going to actually practically show you how the grade of a person can drop if they ignore even the smallest instrument of a course. The rule of the thumb is that you never, you know, skip or miss any instrument. And by instrument, I mean these things like the midterm exam, the final exam, assignments, quizzes, labs, and class participation, of course. So if you miss out on any of these things, you are sure to get a worse grade than many other people in the course who have never missed any of these instruments. The second thing is that you need to understand that what types of different parts there are in each of these instruments. Sometimes the midterm exam, it is made up of multiple parts. Similarly, the final exam can be made up of different parts. And similarly, there will be uh, multiple assignments. So for example, a professor had given you five assignments and one professor gave you only two assignments. So what is the difference between both of these different schemes? So the first scheme, in the first scheme, every assignment will carry three marks because the total 15 marks, three of the absolute marks will go to each of the assignments. But if a professor gave two assignments in the entire course, each of those assignments is going to carry 7.5 marks, right? So what do you think is better or worse? So there's not a single answer to the question that which of these schemes is better. So if you have like five assignments or you have two assignments, the difference in these schemes is that 
when you have five assignments you will have to like be present a little bit more towards the course or you will have to like be there to submit and to download to read to attempt five different assignments instead of just going two times on the learning management system or moodle or anything similar to that and just going two times over there and downloading the assignments only two times and then uploading the assignments twice uh, the downside of this is that even though you are going to work less each assignment is going to be really heavy and uh, if you lose grade in one of the assignments you are going to lose a lot of credit but the benefit in this game is that even though you have to work a lot you have to stay up more the number of assignments are distributed throughout the course in such a way that it will be easier for you to gain credit because each will have 3 marks and 3 marks are pretty less as compared to 7.5 so even if you lose credit in one of the assignments it is not going to hurt you as much as this second scheme so this scheme is riskier and this scheme is uh, not as risky but uh, you know you will have to do a lot of work you will have to stay up more but you can be ensured that you can get a better grade as compared to this scheme so there is much less surety in this scheme to get a good grade and similar goes for quizzes and assignments if you have less quizzes if you have more quizzes you're going to see the effect of uh, you know everything on your final grade so now let me take you to grading of uh, one of my actual courses so i've hidden the names and roll numbers of students but here you can see that i have written lab 1 lab 2 lab 3 lab 4 lab 5 lab 6 and one thing i need to mention over here that the professor or the instructor is never interested in giving you harm or destroying your grade so what we try to do is we try to benefit you for your hard work we try to sometimes take the best out of these six so if a person has like this kind of grading done for each and every single one of their labs like the first lab this person got uh, 16 marks in this one they got 20 out of 20 then 20 20 and in these two that person got like zero marks he didn't really show up but here you can see that the final average for all of these is really high out of 10 why because what we have done is we've taken the best four out of these so we are ignoring these two zeros so this is a pretty gracious scheme i know but uh, sometimes you have to do it in uh, uh, courses which are considered to be slightly difficult as compared to other courses so you see that even if you have lost two of the instruments or probably you performed so bad that you got a zero in that but it is not going to affect your final grade so you have to uh, see that because there were more labs you have to be present for most of these labs in order to ensure your good grade and by the way most of the instructors they don't really do this best thing and if they don't do the best thing let me show you where the grade goes for this person so now you see that the marks of this person they went to 6.3 so previously the marks were 9.5 so the marks went from 9.5 to 6.3 so if the grading was not done uh, taking the best out of these labs the person would have gotten 6.3 marks so you see that uh, this way the student is going to benefit uh, from this scheme that probably they couldn't submit due to something or probably they got zero marks due to some other reason and one of those reasons could be uh, plagiarism but uh, different universities have different uh, plagiarism scheme for penalizing a student for for plagiarism sometimes they give an f in the entire course so please be aware of that Next you see that we have all the quizzes listed over here and the quizzes were designed in such a way that some of those quizzes have 10 total marks one had 18 16 19 so these are different total marks for each of the quizzes so what we have done is we have scaled each of these to 1 by dividing them uh, each of the students marks with the total marks and we get these different columns over here so we have all the uh, marks on scaled from 0 to 1 and here we are going to calculate the total Uh, uh some and here you can see as well that uh, i have uh, you know ignored the smallest two uh, quizzes for every student for for example this student uh, who uh, for some reason had to miss two quizzes their two zeros are going to be ignored but these two zeros the next two zeros are not going to be ignored so still this person got 8 out of 15 because the total quizzes uh, weightage was 15 so this is the point uh, where where i need to make this point more clear that this person did not miss a single quiz 
even if that person got like 0.6 in one of those quizzes and 0.8 out of 1 for one of those quizzes and because these two 0.8 and 0.6 are going to be ignored for this student this student got like really high marks in other uh, you know uh, quizzes so he's getting 14.125 out of 15 which is a really high grade for quizzes so you need to understand that you must be present in all of these uh, instruments so let's look at this person so this person missed quiz number 1 quiz number 6 quiz number 7 quiz number 8 and this person got uh, 5 out of 15 so let me just copy this uh, 0.5 out of 1 to each of these entries and let's see where the grade goes for this person for example this person had attended six quizzes and in each quiz he got 50% marks so you can see that the person now has 7.5 marks out of 15 as opposed to 5 out of 15 so 2.5 marks will make a lot of difference in your final grades similarly here you can see that uh, we have like five assignments which so because all of these had different total marks what i have done is i have scaled them from 0 to 1 and here you can see that i have chosen the best four out of these five assignments so in other words i have ignored one of the lowest marks assignment for each of the students so here you can see that the total marks are 18.1667 so for this student who never missed any assignment so he got 28 out of 30 in one assignment he got 6.5 out of 10 which is not that good in one of the assignments and he got 7 out of 10 in this assignment 20 out of 10 in this 10 out of 10 in this so what is uh, potentially going to happen is that uh, this 6.5 is going to be ignored for this student and he's only going to be credited for 28 out of 30 7 out of 10 20 out of 20 and 10 out of 10 which raises this person's total marks to 18.167 similarly you can see that uh, the mid exam has two parts one uh, one is the objective part the other one is the, the theoretical part so this person got good grades in these and some of the people they didn't get as much as uh, the other ones and similarly the final exam was single module so uh, it was conducted out of 60 marks but then it was scaled to 30 marks so the final was single module and the person got uh, 54 out of 60 marks so we had to scale it down to 30 marks so that it represents the total weightage of final exam in the total 100 and then we simply took the sum of all of these individual gradings from from assignments quizzes mid and final and this is the result and what i did at the end was that i sorted all of these grades based on the final marks so that the highest marks they are on top and the lowest marks they are at the bottom let me discuss the most important part and which is that now you have to look at two different things there are two different grading schemes one of those is called absolute grading and the second one is called relative grading if the professor is choosing to employ the absolute grading scheme uh, normally the universities they have their own grading scheme so let me show you mine here you can see that th the different grading blocks or grading slots so the first grade is called grade a which 4.00 grade point average and the marks the absolute marks are 93 to 100 so if a person got 93 or above up to 100 they would receive an a grade and if the person's marks was 90 or above but below 93 anything below 93 like 92.5 they are going to get an a minus grade and the gpa they will receive is 3.70 similarly for b plus the person if had anything between 87 and 89 meaning marks which are equal or above 87 but below 90 the person is going to get b plus grade and the person will have 3.30 grade point average similarly uh, there are different grades like b b minus c plus c c minus you can see the gpa uh, falling down and the brackets of uh, grades marks they are also you know reducing and when you reach this point which is the d grade which is only passing without any satisfaction of uh, the uh, professor the person should have 60 or more marks and uh, something below 67 to achieve a d grade and anything below 60 59 or below is considered to be an f grade and the person is not going to pass the course it will be a failing grade and the person will have zero gpa 
of course everyone would like to have or to fall inside this bracket but i'm going to show you why people land in any of these different brackets now if a course is really standard it has been evolved for like decades and the course is uh, a low level course and the professors they are uh, very expert so sometimes the things they are evolved they have evolved into a situation where this absolute grading scheme can be employed but in most cases in the modern education because the courses are evolving really fast and the courses are really becoming modern with time uh, it's really difficult to come up with a very standard course in which the students who have uh, worked hard and they are they were intelligent enough most of them should fall into this bracket of absolute marks it doesn't happen so what what we need to do is we need to go into relative grading so i'm going to show you the uh, grading scheme for both of these so let's go back to the to the marks and here you can see that if i look at this particular grade this is a very strange looking class where one of the students was so exceptional that they got 91 marks which is still not in the bracket of a grade which is uh, it is only inside the uh, bracket of a minus and the rest of the class is between 31 and 78 and it's not strange uh, if you ask us from our experience uh, because i've been teaching in un universities for a very long time it's really something which sometimes occurs so uh, there are different possibilities like for example this person could be very very intelligent or this person could be so committed that they uh, that he or she didn't really take any other course in this semester and all of these students are taking five or six courses you know uh, in this semester so this factor can also affect uh, this strange looking distribution so if we plot all of these people on the histogram which is just a graph showing each of the people or the number of people who received a particular amount of total marks so this is the person who received 91 marks and this is the person who received 78 marks whereas this is the person who receives 31 marks and some of them never showed up in the course this distribution is similar to the normal curve and it it has more population inside the middle of the distribution and here you can see that this person is what we sometimes call an outlier or an exceptional person as i told you that uh, this person could have different properties as compared to the other rest of the students as for example that uh, he he or she was only taking one course this semester while all of these people they were taking five or six courses and the other thing is probably this person was much more intelligent as compared to other students or probably this person to worked hard much much more as compared to other students so all of these possibilities are there so we have to somehow consider this person a part of the distribution and then grade or probably we choose to consider this person not a part of the distribution and then we choose to grade on the basis of that so let's look at the grading scheme so if i were to do the absolute grading what i would do is i would simply start from here and i would see that if the marks were above 93 i would give an a grade but because these are between 90 and 93 i would give an a minus grade right and similarly if i see that this person in the absolute grading falls in this bracket between 77 and 79 this person would receive a c plus grade and so on and uh, you can see right away that the class starts to fail miserably after this point so this person will get a d grade and all of these people will receive an f grade all of these students will receive an f grade so let me show you this in the graph So here you can see if I had chosen to do absolute grading on this particular set of grades this person would get an A minus grade and this person would get a C plus grade and most of this class is actually failing the course so the professor knows much better as compared to anyone else what is going on with the students how did they perform in the in the class so based on that the professor can choose to do a relative grading how a relative grading is done a relative grading is done based on the class average the class average is something which is calculated using these formula so here you can see that the average is being calculated using this formula average of az4 to az36 all of these will be the averages and then there is something called a max and min and then you can choose to calculate the standard deviation which is a measure to see how scattered is the 
distribution what is the scatter measure of the results of the students inside this uh, grading scheme which is 12 in this case which is pretty low as compared to other classes i have uh, seen the grades of and the reason is that the distribution of most of the classes between 30 and 60 marks and only some of the cases they are deviating from the main distribution so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a way some professors do the the relative grading so that is called using the z score how the z score works is that you actually take the marks of the person you subtract the class average from the marks of the student and you divide the sum with the standard deviation so that will be the z score and the z score for this particular student is 3.0056 so what you need to do you need to make this absolute referencing for the average and the standard deviation and then what you do is so you copy all of this to all of the students so that you can see the z scores for all of the students so the class average is somewhere over here which is 53 which looking at the uh, highest marks can be considered a low uh, class average and for this class average what what we do is we decide on a grade that what is the grade that we want to give to a person who is at the average of this class distribution so that varies between c plus to b minus mostly chosen so you can even go to like c or b but there are less chances so seeing that the class average is low the grade which should be given on this average should be low so what we do is we give a c plus for example so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the total distribution of all of these grades so for example the z scores they start from minus 1.67 they go up to 3.0056 so i'm going to do a certain calculation and which is that what should be the bracket size for each of the z scores to get a grade so i'm going to actually do this equal sign minus select this cell and add the so i get this measure which is the span of all the z scores so if you started uh, from this point and this point was the zero or number line and you went up to this point you would have gone up to 4.68 on the number line but th this is the complete distribution of, of the student so if you look at uh, the number of grades so you can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 so there are 10 different grades you can simply divide it this thing by a particular number so for example if i even include the f grade in this discussion because f grade is another another grade the 11th grade and that is actually part of this distribution because there will be students who will receive an f grade uh, who should receive an f grade actually who didn't really work enough for this course so we should be including that as well so the total count of the grades uh, becomes 11 so i'm going to divide this number with 11 and i'm going to see what the result is so, so the result is 0.4256 so this could be a bracket size for each of these grades to be present inside this z score if i start from here i go up to 0.4 up to this point 0.4256 to be exact so i'm going to stop over here and i'm going to give c plus to this last person so all of these people now receive a c plus so the next bracket starts from this point so i'm going to simply add 0.4256 to this number so that i can see the next bracket for the next grade so 0.792 is somewhere around here so this person could get a b minus and the last per person in this bracket also gets b minus so the next bracket will be calculated by adding the previous boundary to the this bracket size of 0.4256 and you get 1.2158 so the next grade is, should be b so 1.258 only these two are less than 1.2158 because the next one is 1.5595 so i'm going to give b grades to both of these i need to calculate the next bracket so this plus this number so this is 1.6414 so only this person uh, according to my grading scheme gets b plus uh, if i calculate the next grading uh, bracket so i add this to to the fixed bracket size which is 2.067 so the next boundary is 
2.067 so that means this person can actually get an a minus grade and we don't really need to calculate the next bracket because uh, this person has already fallen into the bracket of the next uh, grade which is a grade so this person gets uh, an a grade so these two people are getting a a is a and a minus this person is getting b plus and all of the students uh, they are getting decent grades up to the people who uh, who fall inside the, the average area and then you go uh, f- uh, from this point towards the lower side so i what i do is i simply see this boundary 0.4256 and 0 is the average point so i'm going to go from 0 to minus 4256 so this point is above minus 4256 on the lower side so this is the last grade so i'm going to give this person a c all of those people who are in this bracket they are going to receive a c grade and similarly i'm going to calculate the next bracket so i get minus 0.829 so this is minus 0.829 this one is inside this limit so i'm going to give all of these people c minus great so this is c minus and then you have the uh, you have to go to the next bracket for the next grade minus 1.225 so this is the point where you have minus uh, this number is greater than minus 1.225 so these people can receive a d plus grade and this last uh, these last people so one of these will uh, receive a d grade so i'm going to simply uh, add uh, the same bracket to the previous boundary line same bracket size minus 1.681 so this uh, all of these numbers are less than minus 1.681 so i can allocate a d grade to these three students but of course uh, the professor can go into the details of these students who have got less than 40 marks for example and see whether uh, they have like they have missed too many uh, instruments or probably they have performed so poor that the professor decides to uh, give them an f grade based on their performance but according to this strict z score grading these people they actually get passed and they get some of them get d grade some of them they get d plus grade c minus c c plus and uh, other grades so this is a really Uh, exceptional kind of uh, distribution where some of the grades were really really outliers and uh, most of the distribution of the class were was towards the lower side and i have shown you this just to emphasize on the fact that there is still a chance for the instructor or the professor to give decent grades to students who have tried to uh, work towards the final grade as compared to this absolute scheme which will actually fail everyone what i'm trying to do by telling you all of this there are two parts to that the first one is that i'm trying to encourage you to try to work towards a better grade and the second thing i'm trying to do is to make you aware of how the grading works so if you knew how the grading works you would be more motivated towards working for every single instrument that is put out there by the professor or the instructor and if you feel like the professor is really pushing everyone too hard you don't need to be worried because if everyone is being pushed the same way you are going to be part of that herd and if the students they don't perform well they will still get decent grades just like in this particular example if the professor is using the uh, the relative uh, grading scheme which in my experience most of the instructors they do that and uh, no no instructor is really interested in uh, you know penalizing the students too much unless uh, the the instructor uh you know see uh, finds or catches plagiarism uh, which is something very serious so uh, i would like to uh, end this with the note that please be aware of your grading scheme because your gpa is going to based on these letter grades and you're going to receive numerical uh you know C- gpa on the basis of these letter grades and those uh, grades are going to be added together uh in your transcript to create a final cumulative uh, gpa a c gpa and that c c gpa is going to actually uh, decide whether you are able to go into other universities for higher education or not so if you're trying to do ms after your bachelor's after your undergraduate uh you won't be able to get into many universities because of a low c gpa and uh, if you have a good c gpa the chances that you get admission in 
most universities they go high and it's uh, really probable that you get an admission and which is of course a desire of many students after they graduate from a university so uh, that is my advice i hope you like the video and uh, if you like the video please uh, share comment and subscribe uh, and i hope to try to make new videos which are based on awareness uh, and they give you some insight about how the universities they work and they work towards giving you your fair amount of uh, credit for the work that you have done see you